Hello, welcome back to More Fun Fixing It. I'm Lee and today I've got a quick repair. This one, I hope, isn't gonna take very long. So, probably release this as a bonus video. This ZX Spectrum was part of a triage episode recently, you have seen on my channel. And this one has no sound, as Paul had said. These are machines that Paul Universal Retro Boss has sent to me for repair. And this one actually works, but it doesn't have any sound. I've already run the diagnostics on this and it passes fully. It's a fully working machine, except no sound. So in the triage episode, the first thing that I did was check the resistance across the speaker. And this is measuring at 39 ohms, which is perfect. It's a 40 ohm speaker. And this is the schematic for the audio generation. We've got the we've got the ULA here, and the sound comes out here on pin 28. It says mic tape, and it goes through this transistor. It also goes straight out to the um, audio ports on the back of the machine through a resistor and a capacitor. Uh, but it goes through a diode here at D9, which is down here, yep, yeah, down here, and this transistor TR7, which is here. Uh, five volts coming in as well, and I think that's to boost the signal, and and then straight to the speaker. The worry is that the ULA is broken in some way, and that would be pretty much a disaster. It's the most expensive part of one of these machines, and if a ULA goes in a ZX Spectrum for repair, often it's not worth replacing it. If it's your pride and joy, and it's a machine you need to keep for posterity reasons, then um, then by all means you've got you've got to replace it, but they do cost quite a lot of money. Probably the cheapest modern replacement is the Nebula from Retroleum. Uh, they're not always in stock, but they're better now than they used to be in the chip shortage. There's also a VLA82. Um, they cost quite a bit more. They, I think, well, the the footprint of the VLA VLA82 is smaller. It's more chip sized. The Nebula actually takes up quite a lot of space on the motherboard. Right, so what is what is wrong with this one? I've already connected it up to capture, so I can show you that it is working, and that's the diagnostics running there. And normally that would be going beep, 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 beep. So have we got that coming out of the ULA? So I've marked pin 28 here on the ULA so that I can see um, any activity coming out of the ULA on the, my oscilloscope. So if I, here we go. There we go. So we've got a full capture then of, um, of the sound actually coming out. Let's try it again. It goes beep, 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 beep. Nice square waves showing you the actual signal coming out of there. So that signal comes out of the ULA on pin 28 and heads over to the base of, or sorry, the left side of D9, which is down here. All right, let's reset that. And there it is again. Beep, beep. And on the, it should come out of the other side of D9 as exactly the same thing. Reset, nothing. There's nothing coming out of D9 at all. And there's definitely not gonna be anything on the, uh, the base of TR7, which is where the, the next port of call for that signal is. Let's just check that just in case. Reset, nothing at all. So D9 has gone pop completely open. I right, just oh, let's compare it with this. This one has got sound. Uh, so black lead on the left of D9, 1.3. And this one, this is in diode mode, 1.3. Oh, that's similar. And black lead on the right, 0.6. 0.6. So measuring it, 
wouldn't actually show me anything. It's not, uh, it's not measuring any differently in diode mode, so that's unusual. I'm gonna take it out and let's see what it does when I put it in a component tester. And that's not seeing it at all. Okay, what's it doing now? It's out of circuit. Yeah, there's nothing there at all. I think it's just gone open circuit. Yeah, it's completely blown. It's just gone open circuit. I have spares. So what I think we were measuring when I was, um, when I put, oh, I've made a bit of a mess of that. When I put the uh, uh, diode test across the diode, I think it was measuring the, the, um, diode in or the forward voltage in the transistor let's see if that's made a difference hey that's one quick repair done and that's the first one off of the mega repair pile behind me so expect lots more videos like that maybe small ones like this maybe much longer ones. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Um, forgot to do anything funny. <laughs>